When you're in Singapore and you just really let it all out on the road. So I find that like precious. So that feels great. It feels great to hit that speed. My name is Darren and I'm a triathlete. My regime currently is I'll try and do something every morning. So I try to clock three to four bike rides a week. I'm a neurodiverse individual, although a lot of people don't see it. So I've got two rats that's visible from my facial twitch. And I'm also ADHD and I'm also autistic. I generally like to go for very long bikes if I've had a long day or I've had a stressful week. But the most rewarding thing for me is obviously it makes me feel very at ease in myself and it helps you to really put things in perspective. Why I like cycling so much is you're not thinking with your mind, you're not saying things. Your whole body is just feeling the road. So that's a very nice feeling. It's the mixture of moving and finding freedom in that kind of motion. As a cyclist in a group, which you call a peloton, we really work together to communicate because we are all each other's ears and eyes, especially on the road. Hopper's tier of road etiquette, safety. One is you trust the people in front and behind you. The second thing is behave predictably. Don't suddenly stop. It's like mini routes within one big route, right? If you go around Singapore. It's like cycling through a whole metropolitan city, right? You see a bit of green, a bit of concrete, you see a bit of this and then drop it like. After a while, you start to appreciate it. And you realise, yeah, actually it's quite nice, it's quite fun. My advice is always, don't be too aggressive on the uphill. Always start conservatively and build up momentum. Be very mindful of your breathing. There's no harm in going down to your easiest gears. I think going uphill is not, it's not really a race, it's really about clearing that portion of the ride and then going back to your flat and finding your rhythm again. Going up the hill, sometimes you need to weave, you need to use your core muscle. So it's a great way to work on your technical handling. But take it easy, have fun. In this bottle, just drink. Yeah. yeah. Take it, take it. To get into road cycling, I think you can really just go for it. Do your research. Just get started. Um, you will find people along the way. You can actually see what are the different cycling clubs in Singapore. You can just join them for rides. Having a community helps you keep going. And it also helps you have a group that you can ask questions. For cyclists, it's quite simple. We're always on the slowest lane. So usually it's a left turn here. I will also like point to indicate the direction I'm going so that it's clear to people around me, the fellow cyclists, where my trajectory is. That is how people are able to really cycle closely in a pack. And it's really because you cycle with each other so much, you know each other. The few times I've gone out with Pelotons, very supportive. And I think generally everyone comes from different walks of life. And so everyone's got an interesting experience to share. Everyone's always joking, laughing, socializing. Everyone sees everyone else as an equal. I think that's what I like about it. So today I'm here to see Gary at Weekend Bike Fitter because we want to optimize my position on the bicycle, especially as I do longer and longer rides. Wow. This is like, you know, Avatar, they film Avatar and then they put on your face. I think overall, you're having quite good scores. You're pretty solid. You can see from here, you are just going towards the left slightly. Like. Okay, so left is like dipping a bit more. It's dipping a bit more, but it can be also your habit of pushing on the left. So you have no, not much of a knee pain and stuff, right? Yeah. So it's just a few adjustments along the way. Like the tail, how much tail the ear has, front and back. You look at saddle tail, Having excessive saddle tilt, you're going to feel a lot of weight in the hands. And that is when you have numb hands, numb fingers. If you have like a saddle issue, uh, you feel saddle sores. When you come for a bike fit, typically you try different saddles, different kind of width, length of saddles, and some with or without a cutout option. So usually this is like the adjust things like seat height and how far the reach and stack is. With this, the riders could typically get a feel of how they're riding. And when you buy the new bike, it's more of an informed purchase. 
Cyclists really like cycling. They really like their bikes. They can talk to you forever about the next upgrade they're thinking of. So actually, even if you don't know anyone, you know, there's always common topics to talk about. So it's actually a really great social activity. I think the sport, however, does make you stronger. You start at one point and you get to another. And it doesn't really matter how long you take as long as you get there. It's really a mirror image of life that you won't have a good day every day. And I think it's also taught me a lot about perseverance and resilience, which has helped me to get over certain mental health issues as well. Like the adrenaline keeps you going, even though after work you're tired, you meet up with friends, you cycle, you enjoy the scenery, you just catch up about life. Cycling is, it has a lot of variety. You can do long endurance exercises, distances over 100 km, or you just go slower, you just enjoy it. For us, during Sundays, you wake up, cycling, you know, you get a good sweat out. Then after you see the sunrise, it's, a, it's quite a therapeutic feeling. It might be hard in Singapore because it's humid, there can be a lot of traffic, so it's scary, but you will not regret it. It will be a great experience for you. And just while keep moving forward, you realise a road bike can't cycle backwards, right? It's always in a forward motion. And I think that's very, very apt with how I approach life. And it's always about moving forward. <laughs>